infection in her eye, and, and she's, it's not real serious, I don't think. She's taken some drops for it, but her eye, both eyes, have been running tears yesterday and today. And, uh, she didn't want to look like my sermon was so powerful it was making her cry. <laughs> <laughs> so she, rather than sit here crying while I preach, she decided to stay home. But that's where she is. <laughs> She's well and all well. <laughs> Good to see each one of you tonight. He needs it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did, did, did Peter backslide? <laughs> did Peter backslide? Well, well now. He's back well, as far as he can get. Any further, he'll be outdoors. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good to see each one. And, and uh, always enjoy coming. And, uh, Pastor Caroline and Spencer appreciate him so much. And, and John and Roxanne, good to see you again tonight. And each and every one of you, I thought of the lady uh, celebrating her 90th birthday. I had a, I had a friend of mine, he lived to be 101. Wow. And he raised 11 children. And he bought his first car when he was 80 and got his driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him why he why he waited till he was 80, he said it was the first time in my life I had enough money. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first time I had enough money to buy a car, he said. <laughs> and then he raised 11 kids and, uh, and, he, and he got his license at 80. Now you think about this, sometimes people forget and don't realize the value they still are. Yes. Got his license at 80. The lady next door, had five kids, he started bringing her to church mm. with him, from Shediac Point to Sheen to Moncton, bringing her to church. She told me many mornings he scared her almost to death. She said she got saved because she was driving with him. That <laughs> 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 was her motive in getting saved. <laughs> I'm going to move here. I didn't realize it. But, uh, uh, but I want to tell you that she got saved she raised her children. She died at age 45, wow. sitting on the step and just dropped dead. And uh, a, a couple of years later, three or four years later, when all the children were grown, some of them were small, all of them were grown, one day the oldest son showed up at church on a Sunday morning. He was living in Ottawa, showed up at our church on Sunday morning, brought every one of his brothers and sisters yeah. to be baptized. Oh, oh awesome. <laughs> That 80-year-old man brought her to church. Yes. Think about it. Yes. Think about it. Awesome. And so when he turned 90, I congratulated him on his 90th birthday. And maybe you feel the same. He told me, he said, I never wanted to be 90 until I was 89. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some truth in that. Yes. There's some truth in that. I'm going to ask John just to... I just want to play this little. Yeah. Let's move that out of the just the stand. I'll give you the, get that out of the way. There's a. I'm going to give these to you, uh, Caroline. Okay. And uh, right. he's going to uh, play this little the clip. I just want to show you. Your health, your finances, your relationships. Begin with what you believe in your heart. The beliefs of your subconscious heart control your perception, and your perception shapes your reality and determines your quality of life. When your heart permeates with a deep awareness of unconditional love and your subconscious self-perception pervades with a new sense of identity based on Christ, then you will break through your limitations, unleash the power of love, and live your best life. It's the power of love. Mm -hmm. That is, that is a meeting that's going to be held in Moncton. And I'd just like to invite everyone uh, that could to come to it. Uh, th this is going to be an awesome meeting. Uh, this is David Youngren, not Peter. That was David uh, Youngren. And he's coming all the way from California. Uh, and he's going to be with us at our church for a power of love meeting. It's going to be all day on a Saturday. I just gave, you know, uh, uh, Pastor's got some of the forms there. It's going to be sat Saturday, September the 16th from 9 to 5. And it's going to be an awesome day. It's an outreach. We're going to be bringing in people. There is a 
a $25 registration fee and our people are registering and then they're paying other people's registration to bring with them and it's going to be a day that people are going to experience an unparalleled exposure to the love of God and introduced to a life without guilt, shame, and fear. Praise mm -hmm. God. Do you realize to be saved, to be saved is this. The guilt has been removed. Yes. yes. The penalty has been remitted. Mm -hmm. yep. And righteousness has been bestowed. Mm -hmm. That's to be saved, to be born again, mm -hmm. to be born again. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, I just encourage you, I just encourage you, if you can get to that meeting, it's going to be one of the good ones uh, that we put on. It's, it's not a Faith Christian Fellowship national meeting. It's, it's the local church's meeting. But it's going to be a good meeting. It really is. It really is. And so we would love to have some of you come. I'm looking forward to it. David Youngren is a powerful, powerful communicator of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Pastor mentioned the Faith Christian Fellowship Conference in Ontario. That's, that's coming up uh, in September 23rd, 22, 23, 24. That's our national conference. There'll be hundreds of people there. And our, this is our newest church in Mississauga, a great church, a wonderful church, several hundred people, and uh, it's going to be an awesome conference. Jeremy's returning for, I think, the third or fourth time, mm -hmm. and he's done, will be the fourth Faith Christian Fellowship conference he's done this year. He did Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Phoenix, Arizona, and then we're going to do our Canadian conference. So uh, we've almost made a Faith Christian Fellowship preacher out of him. <laughs> 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 We're working on it, but uh, it's going to be—it's going to be a great—it's going to be a great meeting, a great meeting. Praise God. Well, it's awesome to be with you tonight. I'm excited. I'm excited to share with you. There's only some of these things over here. And thank you so much. Uh, you give me the best room that we've got yet, and I came along. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't plan on it all. But we're not alone. Not alone. Jesus is here, isn't he? Yes. Praise God. This morning, this morning was the local church in Moncton. It was their annual picnic and water baptism. And I was so thrilled as I went there this morning. And it was held in Centennial Park. And we had church there. And uh, I would say likely the biggest group that we've seen out for this type of an event. And the water baptism was amazing. And, uh, you know, many times we, we don't celebrate what God is doing, but uh, in, in the last three years, I, I think Sean Leckley has baptized 75, somewhere in that percentage. And uh, it's just awesome to see the church growing, yes. see it yes. going, it's increasing. And uh, I want to tell you something, in your life, there's something you need to learn very, very quickly, and I hopefully that you have, and that is never get too upset about your setbacks set your, 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 the things that set you back. You look at things sometimes and think it's a setback, and then all of a sudden you realize, no, it was really a setup. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and don't be quick to pass judgment on the moment. Sometimes the thing that you are quick to look at and say, oh, this was a bad day, you discover tomorrow it was a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. The thing that you thought was lost yesterday, you discover tomorrow was increase. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. There's something that you looked at yesterday that seems like ended in your life and you want to you want to get focused on ending, but you only go up the road a little ways and discover it was a beginning. Mm -hmm. A brand new start. A brand new beginning. See, don't be quick to judge. Don't be quick to pass judgment on things. Be still and know that he's God. Yes. Be still and know that he's God. And let God lead you and guide you. Praise God. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to teach here tonight for a little while. And I've got something exciting that I want to teach to you. If you've heard Sean preach lately, there's one thing you'll discover. Sometimes you hear Sean preaching, you think that he's preaching my sermons. You hear me, you think we're preaching his. But they're kind of, they're kind of <coughs> molded together. And I, I, stand, I, I stand in such great thanksgiving as I hear Sean preach. I, I, I love to listen to him teach the word because he is plugged into something that has opened up the wonderful truths of the gospel in a, in, a, in, a, in a great way, in a great way of communicating it. Uh, I'd like to say to you on behalf of your pastor, your upcoming retreat, 
You know, you know when we do these things, when as pastors we put on these meetings and we go to all the work and we do all that needs to be done to create these moments, those moments are created for you. They're created with you in mind. They're created with love for you because they're created as moments for you to receive good things. Mm -hmm. And every pastor I know, every pastor I know, just really so desires to see everybody participate in something that they know is going to be really good for them. Yes. And uh, then every leader of pastors does the same thing with pastors. <laughs> because you know, pastors miss things the same as you do. <laughs> and they'll miss out on they, 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 they will miss out on things and, and but, but all of these wonderful things that are created uh, for us to receive and you know uh, uh, Mike and Naomi are awesome people yes. Yes. they are a wonderful wonderful young couple uh, I don't know I don't know if they, how much they promoted themselves like not very much but you know Naomi is a, an award winning gospel uh, a, a gospel artist she is and she has written some uh, and been part of some great great gospel things and and uh, she, she there's she's second to none mm -hmm. and uh, you you will just be so enriched as you uh, and I'm so proud I am as, as 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 the leader of FCF I am so proud of Michael and Naomi and I've watched them just come up and just yeah. spring forth and and uh, just become just become such a gift such a gift and so I highly highly recommend it and know you're going to have a blessed blessed weekend praise God open your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 anybody here in this room been a farmer anybody here was a farmer or you are a farmer okay anybody here plant a garden yeah, <laughs> yeah okay you all plant a garden you know what do you know what I feel like when I stand here tonight and open this book to teach you the word of the Lord tonight. I feel like a farmer in the springtime when the sun is warm and the ground has just reached that spot. And he's ready to put seed in that ground. And he puts it in. And maybe at the end of the day after he's worked and planted and stands and looks at a field all planted. And he looks at it and walks away from it that night with the anticipation of what is going to happen in that soil. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. He, the moment he walks away and the last seed is covered, he's got another thought in mind. Harvest time. Mm -hmm. yes. There's going to be a harvest time. Mm -hmm. And every time I stand in front of a congregation and open this book, this is seed to the sower. Mm -hmm. And I look at you and your hearts are the soil in which that seed is going to fall and then I, when I preach, I've learned this over many years of preaching. Sow that seed. The field doesn't look any different when you're done 30 minutes from now. The field isn't going to look any different. But you're going to walk out the door knowing this. There is something different. The seed of this message has fallen into the soil of hearts. And it's going to produce something in the days to come. Okay. Praise God. It will. It will start tonight. Every time I preach, I feel that way. Father, I'm so thankful you've given me another field in which to sow some seed. And it's going to change. It's going to change circumstances and situations and so on. Tonight we're going to turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. And now we're going to break this down. Because we read the Bible too fast. <laughs> we read the Bible too fast. I read the Bible sometimes, I am a month in a couple chapters. Sometimes I'm a month in a verse. Yes. I remember one great preacher that I always loved, and uh, he, was, he was kind of a mentor in my life, and he pastored in the city of Fredericton, and I was going to Bible school there, and I heard he was teaching the book of Hebrews, and then he'd been teach he was my teacher in Bible school, he'd been teaching the book of Hebrews, he'd been teaching it at that time, I think for six weeks he'd been teaching it, and one night I was free, because I worked when I went to Bible school, I was married, and I had, I had a Wednesday night free, I thought, I'm going to go over, and I expected he'd be somewhere over in the 6th or 7th or 8th chapter by now, six weeks, I thought, I'm going to miss a whole lot. 
I went in and he was still in chapter 1 and in verse 1. God who in sundry times and divers <laughs> manners spake unto the fathers in the past by the prophets hath in these last days spoken by his son. He was still right there on that verse six weeks later. Yeah. See sometimes we go too fast. Mm -hmm. We go too fast and we, we read it. But listen, here's the verse. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Now, if you stop right there, you would understand this verse. You would understand this verse. Found in Romans chapter 1. And in verse 16, you would understand Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ. This is the man that in Romans chapter 1 and verse 16 said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because that gospel is the power of God. The gospel presented right is a powerful, powerful thing. The greatest power there is in the earth. Now, when this man says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, this was a man, he, here he was, born of the tribe of Benjamin, mm -hmm. circumcised the eighth day. He, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, as touching the law, blameless. And when it comes to zeal, persecuting the church. And he encounters the gospel in a powerful manner. Yes. In a powerful manner. And when he encountered the gospel, this man who was breathing out threatenings and dragging people in to be killed and, 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 and stood there when Stephen was stoned. Think about it. This man is writing Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. <laughs> now you think about the power of the gospel there. What? When those words are one are are, 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 are are five of the most powerful statements found in the New Testament. Paul, an apostle. Who would have ever thought that that man would one day write all of this New Testament writing and declare himself an apostle of the one he was killing people and that believed in his name? The power of the gospel. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now, that's not what I'm going to preach about. Here's three little words. By the will of God to the saints which are in Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 1 is somewhat of a signature. It's a writing style that's common to the Apostle Paul. And I don't know that Paul is attempting to communicate a truth in the verse uh, as much as it's a Formal introduction, I would read that. I think that's kind of a formal introduction of Paul to the church of Ephesus. But when you are full of something, how many know this? When you are full of something, it comes out in everything. Yeah. When you're full of something, it comes out in everything. Tonight, Spencer, you know what Spencer described? When, you know what Spencer identified when he was giving you something to think about there tonight? He described iniquity. Mm -hmm. What he... Yes. What he, if he would sum that up, that is the description of iniquity. Satan was upright in all of his ways until iniquity was found in his heart. And iniquity wasn't some horrible thing. It was, I'm going to take the place of God. Right. Yeah. Right. That's iniquity. See, and what he described tonight was iniquity. See, and when somebody is full of something, it gets into everything. You can't, what you are full of on the inside is going to be part of everything that we do. Paul was full of revelation. He was full of revelation. He was full of the revelation of the finished work of Christ. He was full of the revelation of the gospel, its power, its ability, to the point that he said, I want to let everything else go and count it as nothing. But this glorious revelation of the gospel is more important to me than anything else. And his one desire was take this gospel to everybody, everywhere. And he still is through the letters that he wrote, isn't it? Praise God. And so he said he was full of revelation. It leaked into his greeting. And there were three words that Paul used.
three words that Paul used that are, look so small, but they swing huge doors open. He said, an apostle of Jesus Christ, say this with me, by the will of God. Yeah. By the will of God. Say it one more time. By the will of God. Oh, think about that. That is the bedrock of Paul's revelation. It stems from this one thing. Here's what Paul knew. Here's what he discovered. In his life, I am who I am by the will of God. By the will of God. By the will of God. There's a phrase that's leaked into the body of Christ you need to purge from your vocabulary. If it be the will of God, yeah. you need to know the will of God. Yes. You yeah. are successful by the will of God. We overcome by the will of God. Not if it be the will of God. I must know the will of God. Mm -hmm. And the will of God, we've got it right here. That's what the New Testament is. It is His will. Yeah. Yeah. It is His will. It's His will and testament that He's left to us so that we can know it. And so Paul said, I am an apostle by the will of God. Sean asked the church congregation a few Sundays ago, I was there. He asked the church this question, <coughs> and I want to ask it to you. He asked the church this, what would it look like if you believed the will of God was on your side? Right now, whatever situation in your life, whatever circumstance, whatever it is that's happening, what would it look like if you really believe the will of God is on my side? Mm -hmm. Praise God. The will of God. I have been in possible situations. I've been preaching for almost 45 years. I have been many times in, in situations that were absolutely impossible. Not maybe, not might be. They were absolutely impossible until mm -hmm. I knew for sure the will of God was on my side. <coughs> And then nothing is impossible. There's nothing impossible to the will of God. And then you're in sync and in line with the knowledge of God's will. Praise God. He said, what would it look like if we believed the will of God was on our side? To roll that out and to feel the assurance, the deep settled assurance, the will of God is for me. <laughs> the will of God is on my side here tonight. Praise God. That brings us to the second verse. Grace to you, be to you and peace mm -hmm. from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. To believe that God is for you will produce a revelation of great grace with peace being the result. Yes. Praise God. When you meditate on this, when you allow yourself to feel what it would feel like knowing that the will of God is for me. When just, just let yourself, just, just let that happen to you. Just, just sit there tonight and say, I am going to allow myself to know that the will of God is for me. I'm not having to try to get it. His will is for me. And if you would just sit here and just meditate that one thing, the will of God is for me. You couldn't stop, no matter what the circumstance, from a great peace arising up within you. A great peace begin to rise up within you. Praise God. Instead of fear, there would be peace. Instead of anxiety, there would be peace. The peace that comes from knowing that God is for you is it a peace that defies all logic. It defies all logic. To know that God is for you produces a peace that defies all logic. To say that that kind of a peace doesn't make sense is an understatement. It's a peace that defies the senses. A wonderful church in the city of Ajax, Ontario, a Jamaican congregation, mainly. Jamaican pastors, a lady pastor, and her husband, who is as much in the ministry as she is, but she is the pastor. And uh, both are ordained ministers, but she's the, she's the speaking pastor. He, he does a lot of the other work. And uh, uh, so uh, a great, wonderful church, a wonderful church, a vibrant church, church filled with love and reaching its community. And they just do such 
awesome things in, in, in the community, such awesome things. And uh, uh, I got a phone call. One of our board members who was uh, an Ajax police officer, he, he called me and he said, I got some news, some bad news I need to share with you. You're gonna to have to help Pastor, you're gonna to have to reach out to her and her husband. Uh, I haven't seen them yet, I'm on my way there. I'm calling you as your friend and as their friend and you know, member of the board and also as a police officer in the city of Ajax. Their oldest son, their oldest sick child, their only son, three children, but the only, only the, the son, who had struggled, he was likely, I, I think he was 24, and just a handsome young man and just a brilliant young man, loved God, loved God, really loved God, and struggled with mental illness. You would, he'd come in here, you, he'd be as normal as, as any one of us, but he, he, he struggled with, with depression. It would come on him sometimes, and he struggled with from a child. And that heavy depression would come, and, and you know, he was on all kinds of medic he, He'd get on this heavy medication, and he'd do all right, but then he didn't like the side effects of the medication. He'd quit it. And then they wouldn't know that he had quit it. And then he'd lapse back into this depression, and then, then they'd get him straightened out again. And when he gets straight out, he'd go back to work and he'd do work and so on. But then he would he, he would just get off of it again because he didn't like how it made him feel. And so he went into one of these heavy depressions, and he and he was home, and uh, they were doing their best with him. And he, she said, the last she saw him, she looked out the window and he was in a taxi. And he'd call a taxi, and he was getting into the taxi. She ran out. Taxi drove away, and. He became missing. But the man called me, the policeman, because they had just found him. The church where they used to have church, they had moved. That building was a flat roof building, and the sides, the roof was down, and you know, those up around the edge was about maybe three feet high. They had been hunting for him for several days, and a police officer going around that building saw something, you know, a ladder up the side. You know, just a, a for emergency ladder for firemen, so on, you know, starts halfway up the wall. He saw something hanging up there. He called for help, and he went up and found his body on top of what was the church. He had gone on top of what used to be the church, and there he was. And the man, the police officer, calls. Long story short, she called me and said, I want you to come and have the home going for John. Mm -hmm. And I went, expecting circumstances would dictate a certain behavioral pattern. I'm talking to you now. Because we're dictated to by circumstances and situations when we don't know the will of God is for us. And we miss an incredible piece. I learned this lesson when I walked in. There were tears. There was sorrow. There was pain. There was hurt. And that's been three years ago. And I've been with her every year on the anniversary of that event I've ministered at the church. And when I arrived expecting, you know what you expect? in a situation like this. And she met me, and as we sit and talked and prayed, and she told me this, I have such a peace, it's embarrassing. <laughs> That's awesome. Because people are expecting yeah. there to be yeah. a certain reaction. Yeah. She said, I have such a peace, Pastor, it's embarrassing in the presence of the people. Mm. Because I know what they're expecting expecting mourning and so but she said I have a peace that's embarrassing mm -hmm. that's what it is to know yes. you are by the will of God yeah. mm -hmm. you are by the will of God and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ is the result of walking uh, I called one of our board members, FCF board member, who has also been a very close friend of that family. 
when I, his name was John too, and I called him, I said, John, I gotta tell you something that just happened. And when I told him what had just happened, here was the first words out of John's mouth was this. Let's make sure that the devil doesn't get one ounce of glory, only Christ will be exalted. Amen. Praise God. Yes. I've made up my mind in every circumstance of my life, it doesn't matter what it is, Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. It's not over until he says it's over. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is in charge. He is the God of the universe. He is my Savior, and He is my righteousness, and He is my peace. Yes. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And what I don't understand right in this moment, He does. Yes. And peace, peace, oh, yeah. wonderful peace. We used to sing it, coming down from the Father of God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. There's an incredible peace that comes from knowing that you are who you are by the will of God. Now, why is it embarrassing? Why did she say to me, Pastor, this peace, I have such a peace, it's embarrassing. We walked into that homegoing service and the whole Jamaican community was there. They'd come from Jamaica. And, and, and you, you're going to be in a Jamaican home to understand. You, you know, you're going to be in you. I mean, they come in singing. They sing through the thing. We walk to the graveyard singing. They stood at that grave and sung until the presence of God was so powerful. And, and I had to, and by the way, she told me, she said, you'll have to dismiss them. They'll stand here and sing until you tell them to go home. <laughs> yeah. And, but, but, but an incredible peace, such an incredible peace. Embarrassing, why? Because when you're in the store, humanly, there's an expected way to act. Yes. Okay? When life pressures you, there is an expected response. And the pressure comes on around you to react in a certain way, to respond in a certain way. You lose your job. Everybody around expects you to respond in a certain way. And you will unless you know that you're his child and your resources change, but your source is still the same. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Your resources change, but the source is still the same. His name is Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Praise God. And he's my source. The only reason I would ever get upset is I thought that Michelin was my source. <laughs> that Michelin was only my resource. Jesus is my source. Amen. You understand that? Yes. And so when everybody else is having a fit, you have a peace. Right. Yes. <laughs> you have peace. A deep, settled peace. I am who I am by the will of God. The will of God is for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It has a way of seeing me through. Amen. It has a way of meeting my needs. And so I'm not going to react to the circumstance the way people think that I should. It's, it may look ridiculous when life pressures you and you don't come up with the expected response. The circumstances and pressures, see, oftentimes manage and dictate our lives. Circumstance tells you you shouldn't sleep tonight. You should worry. Mm. But peace says, go to sleep. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Circumstances, you shouldn't be happy. But peace says, I have a joy unspeakable. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Circumstance will tell you this is a bad day. But joy will say, no, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Praise God. That's good preaching. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. There's a peace that comes from knowing God is for you. Say, God is for me. God is for me. And it brings an uncommon response. Mm -hmm. It brings an uncommon response. When I meditate that God is for me. When I meditate, God is for me. I said, when I meditate, God is for me. I watch my, I watch my son, Sean. No different than any other. He's 40-some years old. He's raising a family. He's got a 16-year-old daughter. 
Uh, it's not easy to, it's not, it's not always easy, you know, teenage children to, in the world today, never, but it never has been. We just forget it never was. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. It wasn't easy for my mother when I was a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> it was just a different set of uneasy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but you know I, I watched him with some with with facing some challenges. And he, you know he, he never he never had a sixteen year old daughter before. He never had a fourteen year old daughter before. And I watched him I watched him struggling with some things. I, some things that I that that I were very concerned about. And as a as a, as a dad, I sit down and talk to him about it and tell him some things that I thought he should do and some things that he shouldn't do. And then he did some things different than I would do because Sean got away. Sean likes to shoot. He likes to target practice. And he'd go out there and, and he'd sit there. He told me, he said, I go out there and I, there's like a picnic table there and I, I sit down there in the woods and Sometimes I don't do much other than just sit there, but I, in this situation with Murray raising my family, I sit there and before I let myself get upset, I sit there and say, I am a dad by the will of God. Mm. Amen. Yes. Huh. Now what does that look like? Mm -hmm. That God is for me in this moment. His will is on my side. And I sit there and told me I meditate that day until grace releases peace mm -hmm. in my spirit. And I do nothing until peace prevails. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. a good lesson to learn, isn't it? That's awesome. Yeah. I do nothing, I say nothing until peace prevails. Mm -hmm. Peace prevails. Oh. And I watched that situation change. Just got back from vacation and all of my children were there and all of my grandchildren together for a week and we had an amazing time. And I watched that working in the life of that beautiful granddaughter. And I thought, oh God, let's let this work in every area of our life. Great grace is received. It results in peace rising up within our spirit. And then when peace has risen up in our spirit from that place of peace, we begin to function in what would have been a dysfunction. Right. Mm -hmm. Praise, God. Praise God. That's another good place to say amen. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of dysfunction, we function from peace. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Mm -hmm. You go to the doctor, and he gives you the facts. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's talking about. I respect my doctor very much. My doctor is a Christian man. I respect him very much. Maybe you go and you get some news that isn't good news. And then the pressure for a certain response because of a certain report until you understand the will of God's for me. I am by the will of God. Grace and peace flows from that will. And now my focus is on the will of, I am who I am by the will of God. Grace and peace. I am the beneficiary of grace and peace. Unearned, undeserved, and unqualified, but he's qualified and he has given me his grace which produces incredible peace. Now, now peace has risen in my spirit. And instead of being filled with anxiety and fear, I'm walking in peace. And it's amazing how the powerful effect of that changes in the atmosphere of the peace of God that passes understanding. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And I meditate on it. And so my spirit, it rises up my spirit, it's flooding my soul. A peace that defies the storm. A peace that 
causes me to become unmanageable to the circumstance. <laughs> unmanageable. The circumstance wants to manage me, but peace is managing my heart. Unmanageable <coughs> by the circumstance. Isn't that a great spot to get in? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Have you ever been there? Have you ever seen somebody else there? Unmanageable by the circumstance. Yes. It's a force inside you that becomes greater than the pressure around you. Amen. Amen. A force inside of you that is greater than the pressure around you. Yes. Oh, praise God. Praise God. If God suddenly arises and you hear yourself saying, if God be for me, who can be against me? Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. Peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. The Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. hmm. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. David McLean called me the other day. He's supposed to be here tonight. Don't worry. It's, he called me the other day. And he says, Pastor Bill, do you know that you're blessed? I says, Dave, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing. Not just blessed. <laughs> every. There's none left out. There's none beyond. I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. With all spiritual blessings. See, knowing the will of God is for me, leads me, leads you to grace and peace that comes from God our Father. Mm -hmm. What kind of a peace comes from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Think about it. Peace then leads us to an understanding of how blessed we are. That peace causes me, instead of sitting back thinking, oh me, it causes me to see how blessed I am. Yes. How blessed I am. Yes. How blessed I am. Are you blessed? Just lift your hand and say, oh, how blessed I am. How blessed I am. Praise God. Praise God. There are many people, and perhaps some of us here in this room, and if we're not right now, there have been times that what I'm going to say relates to us. But there are many people who believe that there are areas in their life which somehow are they're living below the blessing. You may look at yourself right now and think, well, there's spots in my life that somehow I'm living below the blessing. Or there have been times in my life that there was areas that I was living below the blessing. Areas of your life where you feel that life isn't all that it could be. And all that it should be. And you feel like, you feel that way. But here, let me show you something now. Let me show you something very important. Most important thing I'm going to say to you tonight. You feel that life isn't everything it should be. And that you're living below the blessing in some area. As a result of decisions and wrong choices that you have made. I made a wrong choice. Now I'm living with the consequences. And my life is below the blessing. Because of me. Because of something I should have or shouldn't have done. I have had times in my life that I looked at it and it looked like I was a parent loss. And because of one of the areas that you can misjudge very easily is human character. And you think you really know somebody until you put them in a position to discover them. You really think this person is a pastor. You really think, I really know this person and I really feel confident now that if I gave them this responsibility, they're the one. And then they mess it up and now there's a problem. And you begin to feel, I made a wrong decision. I've been there many times as a pastor. I've been there many times and experienced that same thing myself, that same kind of thinking. But I've got, I've got some news for you. You are not the hinge upon which the blessing of God swings. <laughs> Did you hear me? Yep. You are not the hinge upon which the blessing of God swings. If the blessing of God came into my life only because I've done it all right, 
I'm telling you something. I would be living many times below the blessing. But the, the blessing of God doesn't swing on me. It swings on three little words. By the will of God. Oh, hallelujah. By the will of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Some feel that the blessing is elusive to them. You ever, have to ever feel that way? You look at somebody else and you look at your son and you feel the blessing is elusive. It's somewhere in the heavens. I know it's there, but it's somewhere in the heavens. It seems like it will never be able to get from there to here where I am. Except for by the will of God. <laughs> the will of God equals grace. Undeserved, unmerited favor of God. It equals peace. And peace equals unmanageable to circumstances. And that equals blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're blessed. Amen. We're blessed. Yes. We're blessed. When we understand we're in the world, but we're not of it. We're not part of the political system. Right. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We are of another kingdom. Yes. There's another kingdom in the earth. Yep. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. You are in a kingdom with a different set of laws, a different kind of a love, a different realm of peace. It's not won by weaponry. Right. Right. It was won by the cross. Amen. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And we're not putting our trust. <laughs> we're not putting our trust. In men. Right now. Right now. We got our trust is in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And we're an influence for righteousness. <clears throat> we are here to display something yeah. that without Jesus you can't find. <laughs> we're here to display something that without Jesus it doesn't exist. Right. Yes. We're here to allow. I'm not living for the Lord. He is living through me. And I have the great privilege of living in this world and being his love, kindness, and a new way of doing it yes. to this generation. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't he wonderful? Yes. Isn't Jesus our Lord wonderful? Amen. Praise God. Your blessing is not tied to things. Quit looking at things and saying, well, that's blessed. My car is a blessing. Something else is a blessing. No, my car is not a blessing. Mm -hmm. Jesus is my blessing. Mm -hmm. And things come out of the blessing. Everything that I need. He knows all that I need to do. All that his mandate in my life requires. Amen. Praise, yes. God. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. This affects... This, uh, this, uh, this affects... This affects, oh my Lord, I'm going to try to close here. But, but I, I, I just thought of something that's so good. It could go, it could go for a long time if I did not. Praise God. This affects every area of my life. Yes. Amen. Every area of my life. It affects every area of your, of your life as well. And when you begin to think about it, when you begin to think about it now, now, in the, in, in, in the, in the areas of, 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 of finance and in the areas of these things in relation to the church and money, these are big topics in the body of Christ today. But when I begin to, when I begin to understand this, when I begin to understand this, there is something that, is, that has been released with him. There is, a, there is a joyful, hilarious something inside that can give when it looks like you couldn't. It looks like you shouldn't. It looks like you wouldn't. But there's something that happens to the believer. We are able to do things that we shouldn't be able to do. Because something has been released in us of understanding him. I want to give you a verse that I, I, I don't like to use the word bad, but I'm almost certain you may have missed. So we will <laughs> say, we'll say it that way. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. It is written, he hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. Oh, is that the verse I want? 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 10. Now, here it is. He that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit 
of your righteousness. Now, I'm almost certain there's something in here you've missed. He that ministereth seed to the sower, that's, that's Jesus himself. Both minister bread for your food. He does two things. He gives you bread for your food. That can be steak, chicken, tuna. <laughs> <laughs> Multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now listen, we talk about sowing seed. Anybody can take a seed and put a seed in the ground and that seed produce what a seed produces. Anybody can do that. You understand that? Anybody can do that. I can take whatever kind of seed and put that seed in the ground knowing that that seed will produce what one seed produces. I can put 10 seed in the ground and know exactly what 10 seed will produce. Are you following me? You with me? But there's something in that verse we have missed. And it is this. He multiplies. Here's the miracle. Here's what you can't do. Here's what I can't do. He multiplies the seed sown. I sow one, he multiplies the seed, and it produces a harvest beyond expectation. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep. Amen. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Yep. I put one seed in the ground, two seed in the ground, but below the surface after the planting, he multiplies the seed sown. There's not one seed in there. There's not two. There's not ten. I don't know how many there are. He's the multiplier. He multiplies the seed so, and the seed starts producing, and I stand in awe of his goodness because it defies all expectation in my heart. Amen. It's exceeding, abundant, above, and beyond. Amen. Oh, you missed a good place to shut. Praise God. Because he is not, it's not I sow seed and he makes it grow. He multiplies what I sow. Exactly. <laughs> oh, isn't that awesome? Yes. He multiplies what I sow. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, suddenly, that's why don't give out of tradition. Give in faith. That's right. Amen. Yes. 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 Don't do anything out of necessity. Give in faith. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything from pressure. Give in faith. Amen. I don't know how he does it. He's the only one that can do it. He multiplies the actual multiplies the seed so. Yes. That's what he said. That's the miracle yes. in your life. You've got a multiplier of seed praise working God. on your behalf. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So somebody says it's hard times in the Maritimes. Who said that? <laughs> Not when you go to multiply her of seed song. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's stuff going to come up beyond expectation, exceeding, abundant, above and beyond. Why? Because he's multiplying her of seed song. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You're not, your blessing isn't tied to things. It's not tied to the lack of thereof. Don't confuse your resource with your source. Mm -hmm. Don't confuse your resource with your source. Mm -hmm. Praise God. So maybe my bakery isn't doing real good. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> that was only a resource. That's right. <laughs> That's not the source. He's going to multiply the seed sown. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Aren't you glad for this miracle working Jesus that we serve? Absolutely. Resources come, resources go, resources change, but he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you're blessed in the fact that he is my source. He is my life. He is everything. Praise God. I'm not going to dysfunction <laughs> when a resource dries up. I'm not going to sit and bemoan the resources dried up and sit there and dysfunction. Come on, come on, come on. No way. I have a well of a spring of life from which everything flows. I found everything in one thing. See, understand this. I have everything in one thing. Everything in one thing. I'm not looking somewhere else. I've got everything in one thing. Hear me, somebody. I've got everything in one thing. I'm not looking in a dozen places. I've got everything in one thing. His name is Jesus. I've got it all. If of his fullness I have received. Yes. Yes. Yep. 
of his fullness I have received. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. In everything. And of his fullness you have received. You're not, a tie, you're not attached to the lack. No. You're a manifestation of fullness. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Boy, if I freak myself. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I thought Sean tells a little story, but he, was, he lived in Newfoundland, pastored in Newfoundland. <laughs> He was in St. John's and he wanted to go to the museum. He stopped and he asked this Newfoundlander walking down the sidewalk. He said, How do I, can you tell me how to get to the museum? He said, you can't get there from here. <laughs> <laughs> he said to John, you can't get there from here. <laughs> Did you ever been in a spot of life when you're trying to go somewhere and you thought you couldn't get there from where you were? That sounds funny when the Newfoundlander said you can't get there from here, but I've met a lot of Christians who didn't think they could get there from where they were. Right. They didn't think they could get there from here. There's a whole bunch of people out here tonight who don't think they can get there from here. Amen. Come on, they've given up. They don't think they can get there from here. Yes. Yeah. That, that woman that her husband just walked away and she's got three kids left and no income, she don't think she can get there from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. That person that just lost his job and he's coming home to tell his wife that you know, he don't think he can get there from here. Mm -hmm. That one that got a bad report don't think they can get there from here. Mm -hmm. That young man, uh, I got a young man who visited him in prison. He's, he, he's, he's 20, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to tell you details. I, I visited him, wondering why, a 22 year old young man. I never asked him about his crime. He's a, he's a relative of, of, of Duskus. I never asked him about his crime. His crime doesn't matter. I'm not judging him on the base of his crime. The, 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 the country has already done that. I'm not there on the basis of his crime. I'm there on the basis of the cross. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm not there to talk about his crime. I'm there to talk about Jesus. Uh -huh. And I, they don't let me come on Tuesdays. And Tuesday's a difficult day of the week for me to go to the prison. And so I, 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 I noticed a couple of times I was there that it was only him and two other guys. And the whole visitation place empty. Just, just the three of us. Mm. And so I called the prison and I asked them. I said, listen, can I visit him on a different day? And the woman hesitated for a minute. She says, no, sir, you can't. Tuesday's the only day you can see. So I just asked the obvious question, well, why? Mm. She said, because of the nature of his crime, sir. He's not allowed in the visitation area when family members of other families are present with their children. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized, my God, he's in protective custody. Mm -hmm. This is a central cry. Mm -hmm. And everything in you wants to. <coughs> mm -hmm. And then suddenly remember. Mm -hmm. You remember why you're there. Yes. Because you're 22 years <coughs> old. You can get there from here. <laughs> you can still yes. get there from here. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And until we're convinced that we are who we are by the will of God, and Calvary has opened a door for us mm. with peace and yeah. blessing, undescribable in the human language, mm. and that we've got a message, there's a peace for you, and you can get to there today. You can start the journey. Amen. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Stand with me, would you please? Paul has given us the GPS coordinates that reveal exactly where the blessing lies. He's given us the latitude and the longitude of the address. He said it in two words. It's in Christ. We have found everything. Just say those with me. We have found everything for both life and godliness in this one Christ. And it all starts with an understanding. I'm here by the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Now, oh, there's an awesome presence here right now. Just, just lift your hands all over this room. Whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, whatever it is that bears upon you right now, you just stand there with your hands up and say, the will of God is for me. God's for me. I haven't got to try to qualify. He's for me. That's what Calvary was all about. God for you. Hallelujah. You don't think that maybe God will answer your prayer? Let me tell you something. According to the word of the Lord, if he would give us Jesus Christ, there's nothing else that he would withhold from us. He's given you everything. He's given you all that he's got. It's all for you. Hallelujah. And the key to your receiving it isn't your qualifications, his love for you. Mm -hmm. His love for you. Hallelujah. And so anyone in this room tonight that you're struggling in any area, just receive in this beautiful moment an understanding of the will of God is for me. I am an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. I shouldn't be. I murdered Christians. I put them in jail. I did horrible and horrific things. People fled from my presence. They were afraid of me. Oh, and I stand before you and I write you this letter and I pen it and I introduce myself to you. I am Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Yes. Grace and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Hallelujah. I've learned to be content in whatever state I find myself in, he said, because the will of God's on my side. I've learned how to live in abundance with more than enough and I've learned when I was abased and didn't have enough, I learned what to do. I know what to do when I've got a lack. I know what to do when I've got an abundance of resource. I understand who I am by the will of God. Nothing is really mine. None of it would exist. In, but God's will brought me, gathered me, drew me, identified me, empowered me gave me an inheritance among the saints. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Got an inheritance among the saints. That's who you are. That's who you are. Do you understand? You're not trying to get God to accept you. He's already accepted you. Yes. Do you know what God says about you? You're in his will. Mm -hmm. You're the beneficiary of his will. The beneficiary of his will. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, oh, Father, I pray over these people. I thank you for them. When I stood here tonight, I said I felt like a farmer putting seed in the soil. That seed has been delivered now. Now I have great expectation that right now, your Holy Spirit is taking that seed and that deep in the hearts of somebody, despair is being moved aside. Anxiety is being reined in. Worry is being dethroned. Huh. The vision is shifting from the areas of insufficiency and suddenly they're beholding the all-sufficient one, whose name is Jesus. And suddenly an awareness is coming into this group of people right here. That Jesus, you are more than enough. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. Just lift your hands and thank him all over this room. Right I'm going to turn the service back to the pastor. What a wonderful presence. What a wonderful presence.